Okay, well, welcome everybody. It is 5 a.m. 5 a.m. <laughs> it is 5 p.m. on the West Coast and 8 p.m. on the East Coast. I was just uh, about <laughs> 12 hours off there. My goodness. Um, and it is time once again for the Learning Wing here at Online Techniques. Uh, Brenda, you got, uh, do you have sound now? Just thought uh, we'd check on our friend Brenda here, who's having a little trouble getting the sound going here. Oh, nope, she's gone again. Ah, uh, poo. Well, somebody's having trouble, but the rest of us are in here, so um, I don't know if somebody can help her out or not. But uh, we're doing something kind of um, interesting this week because uh, I actually did get uh, people asking me if I would redo this session because they missed it, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, somebody actually who was here at the original session said, I'd just like to see you do it again because there was a lot of information and, um, you know, I'd like to get some things cleared up. Um, the other thing that happened, normally in that kind of a situation, what I would say would be, no, I'm not going to do it again. Um, you know, it'll be up in the learning wing um, in video form. However, and uh, hold on just a second here because, all right, I'm turning the video volume up some. Um Normally, I would just say go look at the video, but the problem is that the videos didn't come out uh, too well for either of these sessions. And the reason was we've been ha up in up here in Big Bear, we've been having a lot of technical problems with the rooms. Most of it due to electrical storms. We've just been in uh, electrical storm craziness going on here for weeks and weeks now, and uh, so we are having rain and stuff right now and if it turns into a big boomer I may get knocked out of here at any time uh, because it, it constantly knocks my DSL out and uh, it you know knocks it out our Verizon connection up here I'm in the sticks so um, it's not necessarily the best place to do this from and sometimes you just get taken offline so um, hopefully tonight we won't have any of those. I think it's over for today. I'm seeing a little bit of blue sky, and it usually clears up about this time in the evening. So hopefully we will be okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to quickly uh, – the nice thing about this is that um, I'm sure this session will be uh, more to the point, more succinct, um, and will take up less time then we took to talk about this subject um, the first time we did this a few weeks ago. Um, and this is part one of a two-part thing. Next week I will show you the exact tools that I'm going to use. But what we're going to talk about tonight is simply um, what's happened to keyword research. Because, guys, the whole game has changed. Um, between the Google algorithm updates that were done last year, uh, Panda and Penguin, and um, you know uh, some other things that, uh, that have been uh, going on, um, the whole game of keyword research has really changed. Uh, how many have been around long enough so that you have done keyword research? Give me a yes or no in the text chat. Yeah, so that you have done keyword research using what's, what's called the 100,000,000 rule. Give me a yes or no in the text chat if you understand what that is and have used it. The 100,000,000 rule. Shirley says no. Marshall says yes. Yeah. Okay, well, things like, you'll find out what it is today. It's something that I have taught for a long time. <clears throat> um, and it, it was, uh, you know, that your, your target, if you wanted to put a blog post or a page on the front page of Google for a good keyword or a niche keyword, you wanted to have 100,000 or less websites tied into it on a narrow search, and you wanted um, at least 1,000 searches being done for that term every month. 
Well, the upshot of what's happened with Google over the last year and a half or so is that that rule is old hat and is passe. And um, all of the, it's, it's interesting because most of the really solid, um, you know, the parameters um, and the qualifiers with really defined uh, edge work on them have gone down the tubes. In other words, that's a very finite, very measurable thing. I want this many websites or less tied into it, and I want at least this many searches. Well, guess what? The way things are working out as a result of all those changes is that there are the, the real solid rules like that. Okay, if my results is above this, I click here and do that. That kind of, of thinking about keywords and about search engine marketing is going out the window. It's becoming um, less something that you can break down into specific parameters, do this now, go there, click that. You can't do that anymore. Um, and in many ways, many, many, many ways, this is really, really good news for people like us, people who want to do search engine marketing, people who want to get traffic to our blogs. Um, a lot of this news that we hear uh, strikes us as bad. For instance, how many people are used to using the Google keyword tool? <laughs> Give me a yes in the text chat if you're used to using the Google keyword tool. Now, if you're used to using it, uh, if you use it the way I use it, you, you know, I don't, I'm not a big uh, believer in, uh, you know, these days in, you know, using Google AdWords, for instance. I mean, Google AdWords are effective if you have a large budget and you want to spend some money on, on advertising. But for most of the people that I deal with, um, they don't have that large budget yet. And so I outright advise them not to do Google AdWords. Uh, but I do teach them to use the Google Keyword Tool to find out some specific information. For instance, how many times a, a search term is searched during the month. Well, how many of you have noticed <laughs> that um, your Google Keyword Tool is going away? Um, some people still have it. In some areas, it's completely gone, and uh, and you have no access to it anymore. Okay, um, if you have an AdWords account, you have uh, access to a replacement call, and we'll get to it. You know, we'll get to it in a while. I don't need to tell you what it's called yet. Um, and we're actually going to visit it to, in the uh, second session. But you have a replacement. It operates differently. It tells you some different things. But um, what I'm here to tell you tonight is that the, the fact that the Google keyword tool is gone, these things, when Google does these kind of things, they, you know, they took the wonder wheel from us and everybody went, oh, what is, where is, I can't do this without my wonder wheel. Uh, and, you know, shut up. Yes, you can. <laughs> You know, um, and it's interesting because we all found ways to operate um, without the wonder wheel. But but this is a bigger, more basic thing. And um, it's really interesting because I th my opinion is that Google is sort of gently leading us to a way of doing this and a way of thinking about this that actually makes it easier for you and I to write content for our blogs and for our web pages uh, than having to be as tied into a keyword or three keywords or five keywords that we're using on this page or this blog post. Um, and uh, it, it's going to make, once you grab onto this, it's going to make writing easier for you. Uh, and you don't have to, you simply don't have to worry about things as much. So the Google keyword is going away. We're going to have a little discussion tonight, okay? This, this, uh, th we've divided this thing into two sessions, and the session tonight is the discussion. And the discussion is about how the game has changed. We're going to talk about um, what Google really wants from you. Um, you know, in, when you create your posts, when you create your... Um, uh, your pages, what they what they really want to see. We're going to talk about the different search behaviors 
and uh, that people have. And so I'm going to give you some really, really interesting numbers that are going to show you why this new way of doing things is really a lot better for you in the long run than the kind of niche marketing we've been able to do with keywords in the past. Now, I've taught how to make niche blogs. And a niche blog is something where, uh, you know, you're just going to put up a website that's highly focused on one keyword and you've done the research and the thousand, you know, the 100,000 thousand rule applies so that you know you can get that web page right on the front of Google for that search term. And, um, you know, you can be in the top four and you're going to get clicks on it and somebody is going to buy your stuff off that web page, right? That's the old way of doing it. Now, you don't have that same kind of assurance that you can, uh, you know, doing, doing what's happening now with the way Google is now and all the rest have followed it, Bing and MSN and all of them are all doing the same thing. Uh, the way things are now, you don't have that kind of assurance that, okay, I see these numbers, I know I can get on the front page of Google by tomorrow morning. You don't have that assurance, that assurance anymore. However, what you do have is uh, you you have a, an assurance of much greater actual traffic if you f if you catch on to the way that it's working now and simply follow the uh, follow the bouncing ball, so to speak. Uh, get on the same side of the table as Google and adopt the same um, motivations, which is why we want to talk about what Google really wants. If you do that, you'll end up with greater traffic than you had before, even though you don't have that ass the assurance of being on the front page if you fit these little you know, on-screen SEO criteria. We're going to talk about something called LSI keywords. These are the things that make this all possible. We're going to talk about social action and how it's more important than certain other things these days and how you can encourage it and get it going. Um, we're going to show the effect of all of this on, talk about the effect of all of this on traditional keyword concepts. Do they still work? Uh, you know, uh, have certain things become completely passe and please don't do them anymore? Or have they just faded in importance in comparison with other things? We're going to talk about, so what does this all mean to you? as somebody who runs a blog or wants traffic to their blog or wants to increase their website ranking. And you know what's the substitute for the keyword tool? Do we even need one? We're going to talk about all of this. So first off, we need to get a good concept on what Google really wants. This is why, I mean, there's a reason Google did the algorithm changes that they did. And these changes were huge, really, really huge. And they, they, actually um, took a system that operated in a certain way and put a whole different concept and put it years ahead of where it was in a couple of steps over a six month period. And it wasn't until, you know, like uh, we're now what, we're a year and a half later, a year later, a year and a half later. And it's, it's only been like in the last three months, four months that people have started to really understand what the heck it, uh, it all meant? Because it was so wide-reaching. If you guys remember, they did, uh, they did the um, Panda update in February of 2012. They, and they did, um, they did the Penguin in like May or June of 2012. In November of 2012, I was still teaching a series on niche blogging. And frankly I hadn't put together and I was I was not alone in this I hadn't really put together yet that the changes that had been done six months and almost a year before had made that style of search engine marketing obsolete in in many many ways that's why that series was never put into a product the way it was intended to be because those principles didn't work anymore and it took a long time for the things the, the changes in Google were so huge 
that it took a long time for the ripples of all this to settle out and for people to figure out what was really going on. Well, all of this stemmed from one, some simple facts. They, it stemmed from what Google wants. Google wants happy searchers. Google survives on people advertising on their search pages. And, you know, with, with Google AdWords and things like that. And the way the whole Google system works is that people find what they want when they search there. They don't have to go searching through page after page after page of crap. They get what they want right up front really quickly and when that happens and it's easy for them to do even if they're not computer gurus or you know they don't live online um the google actually asked i think i've told you all before google asked their programmers what would grandma want to find that's the exact phrase they use what would grandma want to find when she uses our search engine well grandma wants to find all the information that she's looking for in one place Without, you know, without having to go through 16 pages of search results, without having to go through pages and pages of keyword spam. Uh, you guys know what I mean by keyword spam? Give me a yes in the text chat if you've ever seen a web page that makes absolutely no sense. Might not even have been written by somebody who speaks English, but every fifth word or every fifth phrase is the exact phrase you searched. <laughs> on uh, on Google, right? Okay, and you know what somebody did when they put that together. They got some product in the sidebar, or they're representing something, some uh, you know, some uh, some some product that they want to sell you. And there's really no information on the website. Heck, you know, um, people even used to do things like uh, they'd make it an interesting post about something, and then down below the post or down below the printed area on the page, they'd change the font to white and just put the, the keyword hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. <laughs> All right? Um, until, you know, Google finally figured that out, right? And, uh, okay, you can't do that. It's not visible on the screen. Um, it's just keyword spam, and that got that kind of stuff got you know hard to get away with, but but uh, you know that was the style on screen SEO really meant everything for a long long time until the algorithm got smarter and Google started to figure out ways to do things that nobody had ever been artificial intelligence ways of doing things and the algorithm is now making decisions about the quality of content and it's doing it in a lot of really super intelligent ways okay so what would they they want to, to you know give you all of the information as in the easiest way they can um, they want to provide quality information and, uh, you know, reliable authority sites, what they call reliable authority sites in their results. Now, an authority site doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, uh, it's the Encyclopedia Britannica.com. An authority site is whether or not you are an authority site is decided these days by the Google algorithm. <laughs> it can figure out are people happy when when Google serves you up as part of a search results are people happy it, t it figures that out by how long they stay there um, by if they return or not it puts all this information together um, and and makes qualitative and quanti uh, and qu uh, yeah quality judgments about the way people behave online and um, it can look at your total output of what is on your blog for the last year and decide based on that whether or not your blog is a good thing to serve up in any specific search results. Now, I'm, what I'm saying is it, it doesn't just look at a, the, the fact that you've got a blog post with this keyword in the title and in an H1 tag and in an H2 tag and in the alt tag of a, of a picture, uh, you know, of, a, of an image file, and you've got all the on-screen SEO things on this keyword, it doesn't just look at that and say, okay, I'm serving it up. 
what it does is it looks at that and then it looks also at the entire history of your website and says does this website post a lot on this subject is that the underlying subject of this website if that keyword has to do with health, you know, is this a health website that provides a lot of good information along those lines? If it finds out that, it, oh, look, there's only one post on this whole thing, I don't care what, how good your on-page SEO is, it's not going to serve it up. If it's next to a well-established health blog with other information on that same keyword. You see where I'm coming from now? You see what that, what is happening? It's making a qualitative judgment on the quality of your website compared to another one next to it and deciding which is the best results for me to serve to our Google client. <laughs> Okay, and in doing that, it's actually saying, I do not want keyword spam. Boom. So I'm not going to serve that thing because this, you know, here's one blog post and there's nothing else on this site. I'm going to serve up something that may not be quite so highly optimized on the page, but comes from a much more reputable source as far as the algorithm is concerned. Are you guys following me? Does this make sense? Give me a yes in the text chat or give me a no if I have lost you somewhat, okay? All right, so Google, thank you, good, okay. Google wants to provide quality information, reliable for authority uh, sites in the, re, uh, in the results, and they want uh, people to help them do this. They want you and I to help them do this by becoming white hat information providers and not black hat system manipulators uh, I'm gonna be real honest with you a lot of SEO practices in the past have been focused on manipulating the Google system ma manipulating the search engines okay I'm gonna have at least this keyword density and I'm gonna put all these things here because those are the things Google likes to see to make me number one all right in that case, your objective is to do certain things in the HTML composition of a blog post. It's not necessarily to provide the best information on your chosen subject that you can provide. Okay? They're two different things. Google wants you to do the latter. Google wants to serve up information that is of the white hat information provider type. Right. So all this stuff adds up to, you know, what what are Google's motivations? Well, <clears throat> Google's motivations are pretty darn clear. They want more advertising, which means they want more people coming back to their advertising revenue, rather. So which means they want more people coming back to their site to search than going to other places. All right. Um, and so they want to make people happy. Now, what, uh, what is the behavior of the people that they want to make happy? <laughs> All right. 82% of searchers rephrase their search at least three times. Now, think of this in terms of how we used to do keyword research. Uh, I've always taught people that the two main things that you need to know when you do keyword research are the same things you do need to know when you do any market research for any business. The, the major things are, number one, what is my competition? In other words, how many other stores are just like mine? You know, or how many other websites are tied into my keyword? In other words, what's my competition? If I'm going to put um, a store down here on Big Bear Boulevard, and it's going to be a vitamin and supplement, uh, you know, health food store. I want to find out how many other vitamin supplement health food stores are located in Big Bear. I want to know how close they are. Okay. Um, maybe, you know, maybe the, the Valley can ha handle three of them instead of two of them. Um, but I would need to make sure that I, in that case, that I place it in the right location and things like that. I need to know what my competition is. 
It's going to be a lot different situation if I want to, you know, open a, a ski rental shop because I'm going to be in competition with half the valley. Um, so I'm going to have to do business in a lot, uh, in a much different way. My location is going to become much, much more, more important um, than if I'm going to do something, you know, like a vitamin shop that, that we only have two of in the whole valley, right? So I need that information. The other information I need to have is how many customers are there. And that is, you know, so that, that is why we used the Google keyword tool to find out how many people were doing a search. Uh, so we would find, you know, our process was simple. Find out, uh, use the Google system for suggestions and um, look at you know what we would brainstorm ourselves and then use google for suggestions of things that were actually searched and then go through and find things that were um, uh, that were suggested by google and says look at what our competition is and then go into the keyword tool and find out what the searches are on the things where the competition is okay right that's an easy process but now think of these three things here 82% of searchers rephrase at least three times. In other words, they're not using one keyword necessarily. So if you're use, doing research on one keyword then and you're focusing on one keyword, what does that mean? That means there's a whole bunch of them that you're not using. So, uh, you know, just, I mean, this has always been obvious. You want to do keyword research on a lot of different terms that apply to what you're doing. Um, and, you know, not all of them apply to, will apply to everything, but you want to work from large lists. Number two, 55% of searchers use more than three terms. In other words, while they're looking, they're going to go use, you know, they're going to search this, they're going to search that, they're going to search this, they're going to search that. All, all of this, what, what all of this is telling us is that if we can get our minds around the concept of maybe a whole bunch of different variations on keywords might be better than a laser focus on a few keywords, that could be a really, con a really powerful concept to get our heads around, especially when you get to this last statistic. 25% of all searches entered in Google have never been searched before they are completely unique now this stems from people having different styles of searching some people who you know understand boolean strings and things like that are going to be putting in stuff with parentheses and uh, you know percentage marks and th things like this and writing computer language other people are going to be putting in full on questions you know what date was what year was the battle of hastings question mark um, other people are going to be putting in that maybe english is not their first language maybe they are just crappy spellers right some of the best keywords that i ever targeted were misspellings of what i was actually selling all right and this is i mean this is huge one quarter of all the searches put into search engines have never been searched in that way before. Now, what does that mean to you? That means there's no way that you can research it because, number one, Google will have no information on it. Google will not even make it as a suggestion in the dropdown. When you run, uh, you know, when you run a search on Google and you start putting in you know, your basic keyword and stuff, and you look in the drop down for suggestions on variations, it's not even going to be there. 25% of all the searches that'll be done today will not appear in those drop downs or in the Google keyword tool because nobody's ever done them before. So Google has no record of them. So there's no way you can do any research on them. So this is huge. How do we target those? This is a whole market of keywords that we have never had a way into. Never. Until Panda and Penguin.
until the changes that have happened to Google. Because now we do. We actually have a way to actually target those keywords. Now, from this slide, just remember this. Multiple low traffic keywords. In other words, 500 keywords that, that get you 5 or 6 or 10 or 30 hits a month is in all probability going to be a lot better for your website than 10 or 15 that are going to bring you 200, 300, 500, 1,000, all right? Uh, especially if you don't have the money to compete in pay-per-click. Because if you're using really, really highly searched keywords, then you're probably going to end up not on page one, two, three, or four, all right? At least not in the beginning. You're going to end up further back. That's the problem with popular keywords. The competition is too high. So, uh, but you can develop more traffic by concentrating on relevant keywords that are less popular and are search less because they all add up. And they add up because of something that we call, the, this is a whole new thing that came with the new algorithm called LSI keywords. LSI stands for Latent Semantic Indexing. And what it means is, what is your web page all about? What is, what is your site all about? Okay. Um, I, the, the best example that I can give you is one that Don and I have been working on for quite a long time. And um, it's called tipsabouthealthyliving.com. And it is uh, a curated uh, health site. And, you know, we're members of a network marketing company that is our primary business. And it's based on selling those products. But the way we do that is by creating a digest, a health site that is all about um, healthy foods, healthy exercise, healthy uh, you know ways to lose weight, uh, healthy ways to fight heart disease, or you know how to design a diet to keep your blood pressure down and stuff like that. And we don't even come up with the you know we don't come up with the content ourselves. We curate the content from well-respected sources all over the web, from WebMD to the Natural Society. To, you know, this is just a, a, a technique that we use to do this. <clears throat> LSI, latent semantic indexing, means that when the spiders crawl, crawl this site, they look at all the posts that are on there, all the pages that are on there, and Google makes a decision that the latent semantic, you know, the underlying purpose of the site and the subject of the site is say health now every little blog post will will be you know based on different keywords it'll be based on lowering your this one will be lowering your cholesterol naturally this one will be based on um you know um oh eating a certain herb for uh brain health um another one will be uh, you know um CoQ10 enzyme uh, and the benefits of, uh, you know, using supplements that have it, things like that. And so the keywords for each individual blog post will be different. But the subject of the entire website is going to be health, natural health, um, natural health supplements. And Google knows this. Now, what happens is the Google algorithm makes a judgment call, just deciding what your site is all about. Now, Google matches your site with search terms by the subject. In other words, let's take uh, the best example is those 25% that have never been searched before. What does Google do with that? Well, let's say somebody searches... Um, I don't know, uh, well, let's see, uh, um, uh, best way, no triclosan shampoo. <laughs> okay, I mean, who knows, maybe, maybe they don't speak English too well, but it's not something that somebody's going to search all the time, you know, um, or want no triclosan shampoo, or something like that, right? Google is going to look at the content of the sentence, and it's going to decide 
what is this about? Well, triclosan, it's going to say, okay, triclosan, we got different kinds of things out there that have to do with triclosan from chemical companies and from government research and things like that. But this thing says shampoo in it. And, okay, so they probably want to know something about, uh, you know, is triclosan dangerous in shampoo or maybe how to get shampoo that doesn't have triclosan. So that would be at some kind of a natural health website that talks about, you know, no pollution, things like that. All right, and here's some from that category of website, here's a few articles that have to do with triclosan and they mention shampoo. And guess what? Ours is one of them. Now, we've never targeted the term that he put into his search engine. Neither has anybody else. But um, because we've been putting up relevant content with each page optimized on screen the way you normally want to do it, um, and then just consistently putting up content on the same keywords and on the same subject all the time, we're now getting cons uh, considered by Google to be a respected authority site. And we're getting served up on the first page of Google for all sorts of things we would never, ever have thought of, uh, you know, targeting. This is how I, this is what I mean by this has made this much easier for people like you and I. We don't need to spend all this time figuring out how many searches are here. We don't need to spend, really spend too much time figuring out, uh, you know, what, what is our competition. Unless you have a specific goal with a specific individual blog post, your best strategy for your website is to simply look at and decide on 10 or 15 or maybe a few more good keywords that apply to your products, to your services, and use them all the time and three times a week put out content, distribute that content, make it good content, and just do that for a while. If you do that for a while, you'll start getting found for those keywords, but you'll also start getting found for all sorts of other things and your traffic goes up. We made a little experiment a while ago with that website, and even though we haven't really started pushing this thing yet because it's just getting to the finish point, there is no day where we get less than 30, 35, 40 visitors. If, I, if we do nothing to that website for two weeks, we don't drop below about 30 visits during the day. And this is 30 visits from, from uh, search engines, not, certain, not 30 visits from you know, our friends or something like that. It's, uh, it's 30 visits from people finding us. And we're being found for new things. Every day, new searches are finding us. People are coming to and finding those, those articles and going on there, whether we put up something new or not. And we've only been doing this since May. All right, so we have been going for a while. Uh, last two months, we've been working more on construction than traffic. And we're just at the point now where what's going to happen is we're going to shift into the thing will be completed, and then we'll shift into the gears of just putting up a couple blog posts every day, every other day. Um, and the traffic will go through the roof at that point. Now, the, the, but the idea is, guys that we're not doing a lot of specific targeting. We're putting up quality information on a subject and um, just doing it on a consistent basis. And because of the new LSI keyword system, it's figuring out what's relevant to what we're putting up. What this means to you is you don't need to spend that much time worrying about you know, how many searches and how many websites are tied into it and things like that. You don't have to do that as much anymore. What you need to, should be concerned about is putting good quality content with good on-site SEO uh, onto your websites that's very informative and doing it on a regular basis and distributing it. Now, this is the importance of social actions. This is Facebook, LinkedIn, Google. When I say distrib uh, Google+, Plus, when I say distribute something, I mean you put it on these places and you share it around. 
Um, I use only wire for this. You guys know about only wire. If you want to find out about only wire, there's a lesson in the online in online techniques. So when we do uh, tips about healthy living, it appears in our Facebook page and our Facebook group. Um, it appears in LinkedIn and Google Plus. We have special pages there for that website, and the, it brrr, it goes to all those places. Um, now, when you're talking about, you know, when you're brainstorming your keywords. Social actions and social networking has given us a whole new way to look for these things. What are terms are people using to discuss your subject in the social networks? Are they using are they using the same ones you're using? Are they using some that are a little different? If you find some that are a little different, use them as your keywords. Start if you if you know if you refer to something as thing A and you find people talking about the same thing in groups on Facebook and they're referring it to that thing A, then you should go write a couple blog posts that refer to it as that thing A. Right? It's the same thing. It's just a phrase you haven't heard for before. And guess what? You can find out different ways that people talk about things, especially if all of a sudden, wham, you turn into somebody in, you know, Australia or Portugal or somewhere you aren't. You know, <laughs> even within, you know, even for you guys in Canada, between Canada and the U.S., sometimes there's, you know, vastly different ways. Uh, you know, if you say to some, if somebody in Dublin says to somebody in Los Angeles, I uh, hope you have good crack tonight, uh, <laughs> you know, there's going to be a misunderstanding there. <laughs> And there's there's different ways of saying things, and you can use your social networks to find out about that, and and go ahead and do blog posts using other people's terminology. What terms are people using in advertising for your product, your service, um, or similar ones? You know, what terms are being used in news outlets for your products or for your services? You want to be discussing things in similar terms to these, okay? Because Google's looking for current information. Yes, Randy, exactly like that. In fact, you may be the only one in the in the in the room. <laughs> I'm looking at the flags. You may be the only one in the room who would understand what crack means. Anyway. <laughs> um, so you know, Google wants that informa current information. So one of the things it does is it looks at current slang. And if you're, you know, if you're using a term that's right on the edge, um, then uh, of, you know, uh, uh, that uh, that is on the cutting edge of, of being a new term and things like that, then guess what the the algorithm's going to do? It's going to say this is more recent information than that. If you're using a, a brand new word, you know, uh, in in some way that ties into your thing, so all of these things contribute. Social actions are really important, and if you have more comments and more sharing and things like that of your posts, then another you know competing website that is under this Google decides is under the same subject. Uh, matter and is doing a similar thing, but you have more social action, guess which one it's going to serve up higher. It's going to serve up the one with the more social actions. And, guys, uh, it may be an automated system, but OnlyWire still shows up as a lot of social action. Because when we do a blog post on tips about healthy living, it's going to be um, shared on 40 different bookkeeping sites. So, you know, Google looks at that and follows all these things down the line, and uh, that's going to be a lot more influential. I mean, we're we're actually being served up uh, above sites like WebMD and the Natural Society and uh, um, Prevention, and you know, I've done lots of searches where Tips About Healthy Living has an article, and you know, WebMD is too below, things like that. Um, and this is all because of this new style of doing things. We haven't been around as long as prevention or, or WebMD or any of these things. They have tons and tons and tons and tons more content than we do. All right. But um, they're also not out sharing every post they do. I mean, I'm sure their stuff gets shared. But... Um, there, you know, there's things going on. Plus the fact that we've got most 
most of our stuff is new where they as you get older websites under this whole new system start to carry a load of old information and that's why a lot of them um, really shrink up their archives and st store them in different forms now because um, you know it's a, it's kind of dead information if, if nobody's accessing it for a long time so anyway uh, all of this has an effect on what we do the uh, big ones are that the number of actual searches when you do keyword research in other words the reason for going to the Google keyword tool is really reduced it's really become pretty unimportant to know that in the first place um, if Google is suggesting in other words you're on the Google search page and you're putting in something blood pressure uh, you know and you're getting um, blood pressure supplements uh, reducing blood pressure in the drop-down and it's giving you those suggestions you know those are searched somebody is searching them right otherwise they wouldn't be there the number of searches the reason you go to Google keyword tool has become pretty unimportant you want it to be searched and you want to then put it in a list of a bunch of others very similar to it that you'll use interchangeably all through your website for months and months to come but the actual number of you know oh look that's got 1200 searches a month and this one only has 600 searches a month that becomes pretty unimportant anymore because <laughs> of all of these other LSI keywords that can play into everything remember a quarter of the searches that are out there available for you to grab are not going to show up there anyway so I've kind of adopted the whole attitude of I don't know if I really need to know this Monty my dog is freaking out here you are just a big doofus he's got me locked in here <laughs> okay I don't know if I really need to know all this information the the hundred thousand thousand rule is really old hat and I don't uh, I've, I've been doing this now by paying attention to what is searched and simply not caring that much about how many times it's searched and then posting religiously and creatively and uh, in a highly optimized way per post um, built on you know keywords we know are searched and boom we're getting we're getting served up for all sorts of other things uh, besides so what does that all mean um, I would advise you to try and pay more attention to understanding your subject you know posting good information always uh, this is what I meant by this is made this a lot simpler because I don't think you need to be spending all this you know spending time um, going out there and doing this research and writing out your Excel charts and things like that um, especially for people who are starting out in this if you've been doing this for five years or six years you might have some some need to still do things that way but really the the algorithm makes it so that if you understand your subject and you're posting good information often you're gonna get traffic now you know you, you want to use terms people are using in social networks in news uh, in advertising as the keyword in your in your post and on your site you want to target a wider less restrictive list of keywords in your content things that have to do with what your service is or what your products are in general all right now keep in mind that still means you have to know the difference between um, you know using a keyword like health that's still dumb <laughs> all right because what uh, who the heck searches health right it's, it's it's not specific enough you need to get specific with your keywords <clears throat> so that so that uh, you know you're dealing with targeted uh, people who are using it using the the search terms however um, 
you don't really need to be doing what we used to do and focus on five keywords for your entire life and dominate them and dominate them. That, that really shouldn't be uh, taking up much of your mental time anymore. Uh, keep an eye on your keywords. Relax more. They've given us cr permission to, uh, you know, create content in a more natural way. Uh, they've given us permission to write about our subject and to purvey information and provide information. Keep in mind, guys, you don't have to come up with all the information yourself. You don't have to be the author of everything there. You can curate content the same way. If you look at tipsabouthealthyliving.com, it is a site that is a digest of all the best information. We write a little introductory blurb and we give our opinion at the end of uh, a blog post about what the article that we're talking about is about. But, the, but we're actually bringing you articles from other sources and just popping them in there and say, hey, well, we found this interesting thing here. It talks all about this subject and this subject. Uh, check it out. And by the way, think about this and that. And if, you, you know, you know, if you're really interested about that subject, then you might want to look at the products uh, on the product page and blah, blah, blah. That's it. You know, that's what we're doing. We're collecting information. We're not the creators uh, and, and the authorities themselves. We're the curators. We're the, we're the um, collectors of the information. But even doing that, Google recognizes our site as a source of good information, and it's service, you know, serving us up like crazy. So, uh, so what's the substitute for the keyword tool? Well, the keyword planner is something that they have in Google. I will show it to you. You need to have an AdWords account to get the keyword planner. Okay, it's not going to be available like the keyword tool was available outside of AdWords. This is not going to be that way. <clears throat> um, it's available in there now. Uh, if you go to your Google account and you go to products, you can just say add an AdWords account. You know, and uh, it's going to ask you to set up an AdWords account. And you got to put in a credit card and stuff like that. But you don't have to use any AdWords. So uh, you can, if you just want to use the keyword planner, just go get an AdWords account and add it to your Google products, and you can use it. Okay, just don't accidentally put any ads out there. <laughs> It's kind of, it's a little difficult to put ads out accidentally, but, you know, it could be very expensive. Um, so if you want to use the keyword planner, uh, but there, you know, it has some variations in information and, and uh, it's, the interface is a little different. Um, but I will show it to you. I'll also show you something that's completely outside of Google that I actually like better because it's a conglomeration of information from Google. Bing, uh, MSN, and Yahoo. And it looks at all of them and takes the information and uh, comes out with what I think is, is uh, better information in a uh, kind of easier form because uh, it gives you all the suggestions that tie in with the one keyword you put in and then it down lets you download the entire thing as a C uh, CSV file in like one click. So I'll show you that one, too. It's why I'm not even going to the Keyword Planner in Google anymore at all. That's it. for This is our discussion. This has been our discussion. And I hope I put your heads at uh, ease a little bit because a lot of people have been freaking out about this. <laughs> what do we do without the Keyword Tool? Well, you know, my feeling is just relax and use the opportunity to adopt an entire new uh, way of looking at it. Let go of the need to do, uh, to, to, the need to know all this arcane stuff that doesn't really anymore have much influence on uh, what's happening out there as far as who's getting served up for what in what search results. Um, and, and concentrate on providing really good information on your subject, the subject of your blog, and to do it in a consistent way. If you do that, you will start getting found. Um, install the StatPress plugin so you can see right away, you know, what new search terms you've been found for. I check that every day because, believe me, it's a good feeling when you know, oh, look at that. Because you can look at those things. Oh, StatPress says we were found for this and for this and for this search term. 
hmm, I wonder what happens if I go there and search that. And you can see exactly who your competition is on that search term that you never thought of before. And you can, you can investigate this and you can look into it and you can start analyzing. Oh, look, here's this website. I'm being served up on the same stuff as they are all the time. I wonder what our underlying keywords they're using. And then go to their source and start looking at them, seeing what, see what their general keywords are. You can get a lot of good ideas by swiping other people's keywords, you know. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of things you can do like that. And uh, what that, but the, what the main thing about this is that they've just given us permission to relax and to write in the way that it's going to be easiest for us to do it. And that's simply to convey and provide the best information on our subject and not worry about all this algorithm crap because you really don't have to anymore. Anybody got any questions? <clears throat> What's the plugin? Oh, no, stat, uh, stat search. It's one of the ones in the blogging workshop. Uh, stat press. Stat press. It ties in. It's, uh, if you use stat press and Google Analytics together, you'll find that Google Analytics is low on the um, estimation of uh, activity to your website. Um, and that StatPress is a little more exact. StatPress is also live, so if you go into your back office and look at the StatPress numbers, that's what it is right now. Google is a daily update, Google um, Analytics. Um, and one of the things StatPress does is it shows you <clears throat> right in your back office um, what recent search terms have uh, resulted in your website being found so you can go run that search term and find out where you came up you know um, it's interesting just a side note guys you, it's interesting how many people use the different ways of searching in Google um, for instance I was finding us being found for things and then I'd be on page five and still hadn't found us and couldn't figure out why then when I went back to page one and clicked on blogs a lot of people search for blogs they don't want any of the, any other kind of stuff. A lot of people search for videos. Um, so, you know, I'd go back and I'd, huh, I wonder if somebody searched blogs. Boom, there we are, number three. wonder if somebody searched, you know, videos. Oh, there we are, we're number one, <laughs> right? Because we have a video on this subject and nobody else does. And uh, so, you know, be, being on the first page of Google doesn't necessarily mean you show up on all web results. <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a whole new world out there, guys. Uh, let's see. A friend told me we should have three testimonies on a personal Google Plus site and a business Google Plus site to get a boost on Google's new processes. Uh, I don't know anything about that, Shirley. I simply use Google Plus as a place to post links to my blogs. So, um, you know, that's something that I, that uh, you should talk to uh, somebody who's an expert in Google Plus about. <clears throat> uh, is that true, do you think? More emphasis on Google Plus activity. Um, well, there's certain ways that I, I do know you want to tie your website into Google Plus. Uh, you want to have a Google Plus link on your site to your Google Plus page. Um, Google does look at that. You want to set up certain things like the Dublin Core. You can do you do these things um, using uh, the SEO Presser 5, for instance, will give you the ability to quickly set up uh, some SEO things that Google likes, like the Dublin Core, and just have it be an automatic part of the HTML on your um, on your blog on, and on your blog post. Uh, there are things like that you want to be tied in with Google about, uh, especially it's the search, the search thing where you are the author. I, I forget what it's called right now. Um, you know, so that when uh, when things for search results for web pages that you are the author of uh, pop up, then you know you have a it's kind of like a featured listing look. It's got um, a square around it. It's got your picture there that you have registered in Google Plus that pops up. 
and it makes your Google results look better. And you want to have those kind of things. It's, it's uh, is it called authoring? Uh, authorship, Google authorship. You want to have that set up. Uh, it's a fairly new Google thing, and you de you definitely do want to do it because that kind of stuff helps you on Google. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I would be surprised if Google was really doing as much as you hear in the way of influencing, you know, putting putting pressure on people to use Google products and to be tied in with Google Plus as opposed to Facebook, for instance, or LinkedIn. Um, because remember Google's overall objective. They want to sell advertising on Google. All of this other stuff, it's why they're so far, they're so far behind in phones, they're behind in other things. It's because they are an advertising based company that's based on their search engine. And that's what's made them huge and they're very aware of it. Um, and, you know, I, I think that takes precedence over anything and they're not going to sacrifice any of that um, on the chance that they'll make you concentrate more on Google Plus than Facebook. I, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but... Um, you know, Google Plus is a is another tool. Um, they all work, and you need to use them all. So, anybody else? I hope that helped. If not, then uh, we will move on from here. Saturday, by the way, guys. Saturday is a Saturday like any other Saturday at GetLiveTraining.com with Janet and Don. Um, I am running a little bit over here, Janet, so I think I'm just going to keep going if that's okay. Do you have anything you need to say about Saturday other than be there? I mean, it's the place I always am, and I think you always am to be there, too. <laughs> See, aren't my English our stink? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Continuing list building and funnel building. So I know that's where I am going to be at 9 a.m. Pacific and noon Eastern at GetLiveTraining.com. Janet and Don Legere, the best instructors with the best information, in my opinion. And then a week from tonight, we will back here. Be We will back here. <laughs> we will be back here at uh, the same time, and we will uh, dive right into the Google Keyword Planner, and I'll show you that other thing that is my favoriteest thing, uh, for uh, keyword research now that the keyword tool is gone. Have a wonderful evening, everybody, and uh, I hope that helped, and I'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat station. And stay dry, everybody. <laughs> okay. Have a great night. Bye-bye.